Okay? All right, let's see some of the conversations that were had earlier on. This was still in related to floods because there's a new leader, Raila Odinga, criticized the government, saying that they were not prepared well enough for these floods and they don't seem to know what they're doing. There was a reaction from the members of the government. Listen to what they're saying. Mzee unatafutiwa kazi badala ya kujamaza utulie pole pole tena unaanza kutusi chief campaigner wako. Hii mzee yenu shida yake inakwanga nini ku? Hata nyinyi munisaidie mimi simuelewi tena. But if you are to be helped my brother mzee Raila Odinga please humble yourself because the position that we are campaigning for you, led by President William Ruto, is a position that calls for humility, is a position that calls for respect across the entire African continent and the world over. Raila kiongea vizuri vile aliongea jana, wanatua matamshu na mambia, hey, sasa utaenda kufanya maandamano wa disababa, Raila Odinga is a Zimio leader. Kama sisi yapa. And we will stand together as a Zmiu and provide opposition to this country. We will stand together as a Zmiu and provide opposition to this country. We will stand together as a Zmiu and provide opposition to this country. We will stand together as a Zmiu and provide opposition to this country. We will stand together as a Zmiu and provide opposition to this country. We will stand together as a Zmiu and provide uh, <laughs> well, uh, Trevor, that's a very interesting question. Uh, but I think uh, the issue would be uh, what are the requirements for somebody to be elected as AU chair? I think uh, you are supposed to be somebody who is uh, not, um, you know, doing politics as such. Uh, you need to be somebody who, because if you become AU chairman and you are still uh, very much, uh, you know, against uh, government at home, uh, which is what uh, the Honorable Raila Molodinga may be uh, showed by that particular uh, 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 piece of speech. I mean, would you then be expected to be fair as AU chairman? I think that is one of the things that we need to ask ourselves. The other thing that we need to ask ourselves, something that we also need to know, uh, Trevor politics is uh, a game of persuasion. And uh, if you are looking for votes uh, from somebody, and William Ruto, His Excellency the President, has a vote, then I think uh, you are supposed to be somehow kind. And you can criticize. And I don't think Kenya Kwanza government has any problem with being criticized. But we critic in a way that is not malicious. So when you start uh, um, calling, uh, actually even calling uh, a president names in your criticism, then it doesn't show a lot of goodwill, you know? Because you can raise issues, because for me also it's the approach. You can raise issues, but in a way that is not malicious, in a way that is respectful, in a way that only shows you care for the people that, uh, of whose interests you are addressing. So I think for me, it was the approach that um, uh, uh, the right uh, Honorable Ray Lodinga used in this particular address that was not becoming of uh, somebody who wants some assistance uh, to be elected AU chair. Um, it was uh, the malice exposed in that particular piece of speech uh, that uh, would make even other countries, uh, other presidents, uh, worry of, uh, of, of uh, the, honorable, the right honorable Raila Dinga if he were to be AU chair. So I think uh, for me, he could have done better. Uh, he did something good to visit uh, uh, those uh, affected uh, because, of course, he's a national leader. Um, but, but I think uh, uh, he would have done better. Yeah. He would have criticized in a better way. Uh, he would have addressed the issues affecting uh, uh, people there in a way. He would, 
calling the president names. Okay. Uh, you know, a driver, a Jew said, I mean, it, it only fell short of insulting the president and the government. Okay. I think it was not, uh, it was not, uh, it was not in you good faith. You don't think it was fair criticism? Yes, it was. Lotte, was it fair criticism? No, it wasn't fair criticism because <clears throat> what Vaila said was not to keep the government in check. The role of the opposition is to keep the government in check. And, and that is what the president himself has said, that I want an opposition that will keep this government in check. Keeping the, keeping the government in check is not to demean the president or even in a condescending manner talk about the person of the president. Because what he said is that the president uh, is a driver that does not know where the gear is, the steering is, or even the clutch. And so the country is falling. And in a rejoinder, surprisingly, Carlos Musioka accepts and actually louds Raila. He says, Bila kionge mzuri kama vila alivu onge jana. It basically means Carlos Musioka accepts the kind of to lack, the lack of a better word, um, abuse the president, seriously, to say he does not know what he's doing. And so he said, because he does not know what he's doing, Garama ya maisha inendelea kupanda, the cost of living is going up. But let me correct him. Last year, the situation in this country last year at a time like this, and today is different. Garama ya maisha imeteramka. Last year, we were on the streets saying unga. Now, we are not talking about unga. Garama ya maisha imeteramka. That is what I need to tell Raila. The cost of unga last year and the cost of unga now has changed. The cost of fuel last year and the cost of fuel now has changed. We've actually seen, including the dollar that has actually gone all the way to uh, close to 160, now comes to 130. It basically means the president has done something. He's not a, a, a sleeping president like he says. This president works every single day. And the reason why we even saw in Madare when there were floods, I tell you, if it was the previous regime, you will never see that president go to Madare. So this president knows where the steering is. This president knows where the gear is. This president knows where this country is going to. So it is fair enough for the opposition yeah. to criticize the government constructively, not in a manner that demeans the person of the president. Okay. Two, I do not really believe that that kind of condemnation of the president will turn the heart of uh, William Ruto away from campaigning for Raila. I've actually seen people thought when William Ruto takes over power, he was going to punish those people who talked very negatively about him, including the court of Secretary General who said he knows the person who will not be president. But now they sit together. We saw them uh, last week when they were celebrating the Labor Day. They were together. This president does not condemn people for what they do. He will continually support, and I'll tell him, to disapprove these people, continually support Raila Odinga to claim this position because this position when Raila takes it at the EU is for all Kenyans and for all East Africans. So it will be a pride for all of us. The only thing I'll tell Raila is, please, also, opposition does not, and I think you, Raila Odinga knows better. Opposition does not mean demeaning. It just means constructive okay. uh, criticism of the government. Okay, DG, was that constructive criticism? Trevor, allow me to start by saying that I pray that Kenyans do not trivialize a very important matter of national con concern. Now, the issue of the African Union Commission and our quest to be at the leadership of that very body is a very important matter, extremely important, you know, to be trivialized. But that said, it is generally agreed now that it is the turn of East Africa to produce the next AU chair. Now, Kenya is in contention for that position of the AU, AU chair. Of course, we hear of stories of Djibouti, we hear of stories of uh, Somalia, and we hope that um, we will rise, you know, as a country, uh, thinking nationally to be able to lobby um, in the rest of East Africa so that we go one direction. Now, back home, Kenya is an interested party in producing the next AU chair. Now, we all agree, and that's the reason why it is only Sexton Israel Amol Odinga, who has um, you know, the, the, the backing, again, of the president, of the government, and everybody else, you know, to go for that position. We expect uh, that um, you know, the president, together with his government, 
okay? Because now this is, you know, in, an international duty, okay? When you are going for, you know, um, for that position, it is the presidency, it is the government to take the center stage in terms of campaigning, uh, for lack of a better word, so that we get to that, to that position. Allow me to say that they have done a wonderful job, if you ask me. I have seen a tremendous, um, you know, uh, they have been reaching out, uh, the president to his counterparts. I have seen my very good friend, uh, the Honorable Musale Mudavadi, also reaching out. So I think we're in, you know, in good position going forward. But I hope that um, we have a way that we can you know, probably have one candidate in East Africa. But coming back home, probably the reason for which we may want to vilify is Sexton Israel Amol Odinga. Maybe one of the strengths that he carries with him to the AU Commission as chair. We are living in a world that is full of injustice. We need a person who can stand in the face of justice. We need a person who can talk things in black and white. The reason that, um, you know, you, know you, you cannot, for example, you know, Raila has been extremely consistent. He says in Raila Molodinga has a constituency in this country that identifies with him, that looks up to him. I mean, you can imagine Raila Molodinga being on the streets because of the high cost of living. And not any of my brothers here who are much, much younger and who have a lot of energy. Now, for that reason, now we are talking about the low cost, I mean, the decreased cost of what? Of living. It's talking about food, the prices have gone down. It took something for the, uh, for, the, for, the, for the government to start thinking about measures of reducing the cost, the cost of living. The reason why I was saying the president is being reactionary. And sometimes it, you know, it, it takes a hard talk. I mean, for all of us, I mean, it takes a hard talk to rethink uh, a strategy and just probably make it uh, better. And so for me, I support fully and identify with what uh, His Excellency Raila Molo Dinga said the other day. I talked about the reactionary uh, move of the president and the offer of uh, 10,000, okay? It is probably because of what <laughs> the Honorable Raila Molo Dinga said when he went to see um, the victims of the floods and everything like that. And so let us uh, not trivialize this. I think that um, Raila has been very consistent. Yeah. We are not going to see a different Raila, for example. If he's not been stealing, you don't expect him to steal just because he wants to be the AU chair, yeah? And if he's, if he's been standing in the gap for the downtrodden in this country, we expect that he'll do the same thing when he gets to the AU commission. Okay. So that is, his, his, that is, his, that is what Raila Molodinga is. Okay. Yeah. Lotega so agrees and disagrees it. partly, but we're running out of time here, and I'll give you a chance for closing remarks. All of you, I'll start with you, Andrew. So thank you, Trevor. And uh, um, the discussion that we have had uh, has, was very important because this is our country. Uh, and uh, I agree with the DG that all citizens uh, deserve uh, uh, services uh, from the national government and county government. Uh, and that is exactly what uh, His Excellency, the President, is doing. Uh, I think when he talks about families, 10,000 per family, I think it doesn't matter. Uh, to which political affiliation they, they belong. Um, and that is why the president, uh, to just conclude, uh, is uh, even ready and willing. You know, he sent a memorandum to when he had talks at Bomas, uh, and, uh, uh, because we, to, 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 he wants uh, the office of the official leader of opposition created because the president is not hiding anything. Uh, he wants to be criticized, but uh, of course, uh, uh, constructively, uh, that we do not have malice. And so this is our country, and uh, again, we commiserate with all that uh, have been affected by by, 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 by these uh, uh, floods and landslides. And uh, of course, we will move together. And like uh, my good brother, um, Honorable Ote has said, I believe that uh, President William Ruto will still campaign for His Excellency, uh, the Right Honorable Olaira Molodinga, okay. to be AU Chair. Uh, because uh, when he gets there, 
it's a, a position for Kenya. Okay. And so um, the, the country is okay, Trevor. We are moving in the right direction. Okay. Uh, we only need to talk to each other that, like, like we have been doing before. Yeah. Uh, the Right Honorable Raila Odinga uh, came and uh, used this kind of language. We have been talking to one another, not at each other. Okay. And I think I beseech uh, the opposition uh, to cultivate a culture of talking to one another, not at each other. It's our country. Okay. If it is sinks, it is sinks with all of us. Okay. And it progresses yeah. with all of us. Thank Today, you. Closing remarks. Well, I think there is a conspiracy to anger this time. And I think we all need to be prepared for anger in the coming year. Why? Because one of these floods, we've actually seen that a lot of farms that were planted have been swept, swept away. We've also seen that there's going to be drought because now they cycle because of the climate change. After floods, then we're going to see drought. Uh, we've also seen um, fake inputs. And I'm sorry to say that uh, as now we are discussing about a minister and then the ministry and how fake fertilizer came into uh, people's farms that again is conspiring to have anger for this country. And then we have got a lethargic uh, donors. Uh, donors have now concentrated into Israel war. They have concentrated into the Ukraine-Russia war. Yeah. Uh, most of the funding that we'll have gotten to help us in hunger this next year is not, com is not coming. And so we all need to be prepared as a country and also at the individual level. If the government is warning you not to live in an environment where you're going to be affected by droughts or by floods, yeah. please also take caution so that we are not all, always blaming government for catastrophes that we will have actually avoided at the individual level. Okay. So my parting shot is that everything is conspiring to see this country in anger next year. And we need to be prepared I believe the county government is prepared. Yeah. I believe at the house all of you are also prepared. And I believe the national government is going to be prepared to ensure that Kenyans don't go into another spate of complaints of emergencies like we're seeing now, because already everything is conspiring. Okay. DG, closing remarks. I think there is need for a concerted effort uh, by all levels of government, by that I mean national government and county governments and partners in handling the matter at hand. The matter at hand is ensuring that um, schools reopen and that the young ones of Kenya have um, you know, a, a smooth sailing as they go into you know, their term uh, to start learning and doing everything. And probably Trevor, there, there may be need for a multi-agency team uh, just to ensure that uh, all assessments are done where there needs to be you know, specific interventions that is done so that uh, we do not have uh, kids who are disadvantaged uh, compared to the rest of the others uh, where there were no uh, effects in their school due to, due to flooding. But also that governments, both national and sub-national, and that's county governments, need to develop plans, you know, like the one that we are launching with you last week, you know, that, um, you know, will ensure, I mean, that we don't have cities that in the face of floods are submerged or good suburbs and stuff like that. So we need to have those plans, we need to have policies and regulations to ensure that we comply and enforce so that um, you know, we better deal with the cases of floods and other you know, calamities such as the one that we've seen. Finally, finally, uh, the Honorable Raila Molo Dinga means well for this country for as long as we can remember. And that's a fact that none of us, either in this studio today or elsewhere, can deny, okay? Um, whatever it is that he, he, he says, I think we need to take it seriously. And in terms of the next chair of the AU Commission, I still hold the view, and that's the view of majority of Kenyans and majority of Africans, that is the best suited gentleman for that position. Because in him, we will uh, have a very vibrant, um, you know, AU Commission and an Africa that all of us can be proud of. All right. Thank you all for making time. His Excellency Dr. Matthews Owili, Deputy Governor for Kisumu, Honorable Joe Nyutu, Senator for Moranga, Honorable Titus Lote, Member of Parliament Kacheliba, Sante Sana. We apologize, we couldn't find Honorable Anthony Oluwoche, Member of Parliament for Madari. We had technical issues with his link, but we'll have him here next time again to talk about the issues of floods around Madari. All right, we want to thank you all for the feedback that you've sent through. And as right now, coming up next is Cooking Tips. All right, bye for now.